Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and this is part two of our series on building terrain to celebrate the release of Vigration Axis Allies. In our previous video, we used the awesome model of the Ruin Church by Battlefront Miniatures to prepare a terrain piece to get ready for the Bagration Axis Allies. That was only half the project, however. In this video, we're going to move on and complete the spread by making a graveyard. So, we've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's get to it. The first thing I did was get a fresh sheet of cardboard and lay it out next to the existing piece, in this case, the ruined church. Then I ruled off what the size of the base would be. Taking a rough plan, I then transferred that onto the surface of the base and cut the base out. I glued the base to a second sheet of cardboard that was the same shape but was about a centimeter wider on the edges. And then I sealed off all the edges with masking tape. This smooths down the gradient between the levels of the cardboard and also seals off the edge of the cardboard grain from any moisture that it might absorb when I work with glue and paint later. To create a lot of the little details, I decided to use my 3D printer. I went to Thingiverse and downloaded some skeletons, some decorations for my fence, some tombstones, and some crypts, and then I went ahead and printed them off. I took them off the build plate, and then I cured them. Going back to the base, I decided I didn't want the graveyard to be perfectly level. So I pulled out a sheet of 5mm thick foam core and cut out two pieces, one slightly shorter than the other. I peeled the paper off the outside and then I glued one on top of the other. I cut it to roughly fit into the shape of the graveyard and used a file to round off the corners. At this time I also took out a sharp knife and cut out the spaces for the craters right through the top layer of the, the cardboard. With the raised portion in the middle of the graveyard pretty much made, I then glued it into place. Now I built a stone path by taking a pen and scoring circular stone shapes into the surface of the cardboard itself. With this completed, I could turn my attention to the walls. I built them from pink styrofoam, so I got out my styrofoam cutter and cut the walls to the right length. I also cut some uh, squares to form capstones and got out my circle cutting attachment and cut some cylinders to go around the entrances to sort of frame a doorway. Laying out the stone walls on the base, I then cut them to fit and shape them around the craters. After that's done, I take out my hot glue and glue the capstones on. I need to texture the exterior of the walls, so I use an old model builder's trick. I take a ball of tin foil, crumple it up, and then roll the tin foil over the surface of the styrofoam. The ridges and shapes on the tin foil transfer into the styrofoam, giving it a really nice rock-like texture. With that done, I grab my pen and score shapes of the rocks into the surface of the wall itself. I also go ahead and glue the decorative elements that I 3D printed to go on the wall onto the top of the capstones. It was now about time to start painting. So I got out my airbrush and undercoated the crypts and the tombstones with black airbrush paint and took out some Mod Podge and some black paint, mixed it at about 50-50 and painted that over the walls. The Mod Podge would seal the styrofoam and keep it from being damaged from the moisture from paints and other glues in the future. Once the primers had dried, I then went to work on the walls. I took out my airbrush and sprayed it down with a coat of sand yellow. Then I followed up with a lighter coat 
of gray, focusing on the upper layers. I went back with a couple of different colors, including some brown tones and red tones, and picked out some specific rocks to make them more visually interesting, and then dry brushed these with a quick coat of ivory. With all the dry brushing done, the rock wall was looking a little stark and had lost some of its definition. So I took out Army Painter Strong Tone and, using a big brush, applied it over all the wall sections. With the rock walls in hand, now it was time to move on to the tombstones and the crypts. I painted them both identically, and I started by spraying them down with camouflage dark brown. This gave them a fairly dark and kind of decrepit base coat. Over top of that, I then went in and lightly sprayed port stone. This started to make them look a little brighter, and I followed up with a highlight by giving everything a quick dry brush of ivory. At this point, they were looking pretty good, but I needed to tone down the color gradients a bit. So, as always, I took out my Army Painter Strong Tone and washed them all down and left them to dry. At this point, I could begin assembling the model. So I started by gluing down the walls and then went on to gluing down the tombs and the crypts. Laying out the walls gave me a better idea of where the craters would go, so I got out a bunch of styrofoam cutoffs and began to glue them down to outline the rim of each crater. After these were glued down, I then got out my masking tape and went ahead and sealed off around each piece of styrofoam and evened out the gaps. Now it was time to get to work on the grit. I took out some Mod Podge, mixed it with a little black acrylic paint, this is to give it some pre-shading as a foundation layer, and then spread it down heavily in patches. I went over each patch and sprinkled it with my handy mixture of sand and kitty litter. And then once that was done, but while the underlying Mod Podge was still wet, I went and applied some rubbing alcohol over top with a eyedropper, and then over top of that put on a little more watered down Mod Podge. The rubbing alcohol helps break the surface tension in the glue and just gives it a much stronger rock solid bond. When I was finished applying the grit, this model would need some time to dry, so I took it outside and set it in the sun and left it alone for eight or so hours. With the grit dried and set, it was now time to get to work painting. I started by getting out some more black acrylic paint and just went in and primed anything that wasn't already painted over or suitably shaded. Then when that was done, I got out some masking tape and masked off around the walls and anywhere I thought I might accidentally slop some paint. Then I could start dry brushing. And as always with my terrain, there was a lot of dry brushing. I started with dark brown, went over top of the grit, moved on to tan, and then went to dark gray. I put the dark gray on the stone path and over top of some of the larger rocks that were on the base, switched to light gray, put those on the path and the rocks, then went back to an off-white, went over the entire base, and lastly re-dry brushed with an extremely light layer of white. Removing the masking tape, I get out my dark wash enamel and go in and pin wash in around the cobbles on the stone path and some of the larger objects on the ground. This just helps rebuild the definition that you lose a little bit after all the dry brushing. With this complete, I get out my dry pigments, I look for a bunch of different earth tones, and I go and work them in along the edges of the path, anywhere I think I could add some visual interest and variety in the colors. I also focus on working around the craters with these. Finally, I move on to the small details. I paint some of the items around the graveyard, such as 
the bike by the front gate, and the wood that's lying around different colors. And I finish off by putting out some green paint, watering it down very thinly, and applying it around the bases of the walls, on the crypts and the tombs, to look like some moss is growing there. At this point I can start on landscaping, and I start with static grass. I take the model of the church that this is supposed to work in combination with, and I lay them side by side so I can get the patches of the static grass matched up. Then once I have them roughly even, I spread down some Mod Podge and sprinkle it with yellow static grass. Now, multiple colors of static grass always look better, so then I follow up doing exactly the same thing with a lighter green. When this is done, I decide I want some fallen leaf cover to make everything look just a little bit more decrepit. I spread down some watered down Mod Podge and sprinkle some oregano over top. Dried oregano makes really good ground cover. Plus, it makes the model smell good. After that, I place a store-bought tree that I had kicking around and glue down some bushes and some clumps of grass that I had made previously or that I had bought. This pretty much concluded the landscaping, so I hit the model with a couple coats of matte varnish and left it to dry. Lastly, I decided that in some of the deeper craters and areas it would look good to have some water effects, so I got out gloss varnish and painted it thickly in these places to imply moisture and accumulated water. And with that, this project was done. I think the whole model evokes a slightly spooky and decrepit kind of appearance, but manages to retain some real serious visual interest with small details such as the tombs. The stone walls and the walkways add a bit of texture, and the color from the bushes and the overgrowth all around really helps the model stand out. Better yet, when you place it in combination with the ruined church that we produced in the previous video, we have a really dynamic and visually interesting area over which to play our games of Flames of War. All in all, I think this project has yielded a very suitable spread to add to our games table to use with our new battles celebrating the launch of Vigration Axis Allies. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. Please consider checking out my Patreon page or head over to my Etsy store where you can purchase many of the projects I feature in my videos. The links are in the description. Please stay tuned for new content twice weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for model building, miniature painting, and diorama content. If you've not yet subscribed, make sure you do and press the bell button to receive immediate notification so you do not miss out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.